Well, obviously, you know, a very good win for our team here tonight. And, um, it was a win we needed to get back in the playoff hunt and uh, just love the way our guys competed and battled for, uh, you know, 60 minutes. When we got down 3-1 to one on, in the second period, there was a believability on our bench. You know, like there was a poise, there was a composure on our bench that I, our, our guys just knew they were coming back. And, you know, from a coaching perspective, it's great when you, you, you have that feeling to see it. Uh, so there was some give conviction in our guys, and then we got back into it 3-3, gave one away at the end of the at the end of the th second to uh, make it 4-3. But you know, after that, boom, they just came back and continued working hard, stayed to our game plan. We found a way to win, and uh, we're at this point in the season, you need wins, and that was a huge win for our hockey club. <laughs> now it's getting ready for our next game uh, on the weekend, Friday and Saturday, and one game at a time, and continue uh, moving forward. But happy for our guys, happy for the gentleman to my left, Robbie Vollard, for a good game, very good game, and for Brian Mount, who, who gave us some strong goaltending in the third period and, and got his first one of the year. So pleased for uh, every, for our whole team and, and those guys. Uh, and obviously, Josh Manson for his first goal of the year and the game winning goal. Questions? Uh, what was the basis for the decision to change Rollins and Mountain between second and third period? Yeah, I, you know, I just thought that, um, you know, it could have given us a little life and energy. and. Um, you know, Brian. You know, is, he's a more aggressive type of goaltender. And if you if you saw, they were they go to the net pretty hard and they drive the net pretty hard. So that's a part of their the way their coaching staff coaches, and which is which is what we're trying to get our guys to go to the net a little harder. So with that, I just thought that uh, Brian was, was maybe a little more aggressive in his crease and out a little bit more. That would give us a little bit more. He could handle that a little bit better. And you know, they got a couple goals there to go to nothing. You know, that um, I thought you know Brian putting him in third base a little more jumped that way. Robbie, from your standpoint, you know, coaches talk about how you guys seem to play real hard in front of Brian. When he goes in in the third period, what's uh, what's the talk on the bench? I mean, we play hard for you know whoever, whoever's in net, Rawlings or Brian. But uh, you know, Brian's a senior and he hasn't exactly played a lot. And you know, guys root for him. And he battles hard in practice. And you know, when he gets in there, we were just we were just really excited that maybe he had a chance to get a win. And the guys were really excited that he got that. Coach, in the last goal, it looked like Manson stopped the round two and then was trailing and scored the goal two. Is that, is that right? Yeah. yeah, he made a real good defensive play there. And, you know, their guy was coming out of the box. And um, so he made a good defensive play. And then, you know, the play moved up ice. Just look at the time. Play moved up ice. And uh, even trying to get our defenseman up ice a little more. And, you know, where you found him? Nice, nice pass. Found the open seam. And I think the puck just went on edge for Manson when he, when he shot it, which was enough because. If it doesn't go on edge, you might not elevate as quickly and uh, beat him to the left side. So, yeah, make good defensive play that turned into a good offensive uh, play. Manson's really picked up a, a lion's share of the load after Element went down. What have you seen out of him on the ice, uh, off the ice, practice, game time? He uh, battles, he competes, he's a warrior mentality. and um, uh, He's really had a great second half, and you know he's banged up there a lot, and he just goes out and plays. And, um, there's been a lot of leadership qualities have come out of him. Uh, last few uh, weeks. Okay. You take these two points and keep rolling on into the weekend. Then. Yeah, you know it's you know a great uh, you know momentum boost. That's what we need, and you know we've been playing okay. We just have we haven't been getting the results we wanted. And you know um, you know we lost two games last weekend, two to one. We couldn't find the offense, and you know we gave up some poor timely goals. So um, this you know the win validates some of the things we've been. Talking to the guys about about how to play, and I think we did that tonight. And but more than anything, it was it's about the guys, their attitude, their their mindset, the mentality that they went into the game with. They they, they believe in each other, trust each other, and it was really visible from the bench uh, all game long. Robbie, from a player standpoint, how do you keep that intensity going into the next couple of games? That's been something that's plagued this team this year is a bit of inconsistency. Uh, I mean. You know, looking back at the game, we got to learn from what made us successful, and I think everybody in the locker room sees it. Um, everybody's stepping up and talking, being positive. Uh, at this time of the year, no one's really freshman anymore, and it's so everybody's talking up and you know, speaking up in the locker room, and it's creating a good atmosphere. And I think if we keep that culture in the locker room, it's just going to carry over, and you know, we just keep battling hard and hope for the win. I guess uh, this is for either one of you guys, but um, three games this year on bigger sheets. Of ice at UNH and twice here, and you guys come out uh, with pretty good results. Played a good game, one at UNH that was a really close game, and then uh, twice here with wins. Is there something about playing a bigger sheet? Do you guys think um, 
maybe caters to your style of player, the players you have on the roster? You want me to go in? Yeah. yeah. I'll take it. Um, you know, when you, UMass and UNH are both play the game real fast, and you know, the, the sheet helps them out the way they play. And so it puts you, you know, on your, your own, on our heels a little bit. You know, for us, when you have a bigger sheet, it also gives you more time to make a play. So I think for a defenseman, it works out pretty well. We have a little more time to make a play. Now you've got to cover more ice. Um, but we, we've done okay. You know, on the power play, it's, you know, with, the, with both teams, the way they move, particularly when we talk about UMass, they've got a lot of movement, they've got a lot of skill. So that puts, you know, you know it's a challenge for us that way. And, um, you know, they scored twice early. So, hey, you know, at the end of the day, you just got to go play, regardless if it's UNH or UMass, regardless if it's on our sheet or their sheet. And, uh, but we're not intimidated by the big sheet like we might have been last year. Uh, Josh, first career goal, what a time to get it, huh? Yeah, it was, uh, it was a nice feed from Murchie. He was his third assist of the night, so he was, his, eye, his eyes in the back of his head tonight. It was great. Getting that win on the road in overtime, coming back, uh, you know, how can your team use this to keep carrying forward coming into the weekend against Providence? Well, overtime winners are obviously a lot more dramatic than regular wins, but uh, hopefully we can just keep building off that, uh, take momentum that we created tonight. Obviously, there's only three game gaps, so we got a or three day gap, so we got a uh, quick turnaround here into the weekend, and we just got to use this as fuel for the fire to keep pushing the playoffs.